gin too Sipping and roasting Yeah, that's what we do Set them up, knock them down Make that cherry glow Whiskey and cigars The gentleman's cologne Cheers, y'all. Sounds like a party just about to happen, ladies Welcome, and gentlemen. ladies and gentlemen, to this fine radio program, podcast, and video extravaganza known internationally Hi, Mom. as the world famous Smoking and Toasting. Welcome to all of our friends out in Radio Land. I've always wanted to say that. You know, I, I was in Radio Land. I was in I was in the radio business for 30, 35 years, was on air almost all of that. And I never said hello out there in radio <laughs> hello land. Out there in radio and then once land. I wasn't on the radio anymore, I thought, you know, that would have been fun to say just one time. So now that we're on the radio, <laughs> just because radio. it's so stupid, right? Uh, but now that we are on the radio, hello to all of you out there in radio land. It's nice to fulfill those little those little things that, like, like when you were a kid, you yeah. think that would be right, cool. right, right. It's not exactly bucket list, but it's more like you know. I mean, I understand. I just bought a flying V guitar. Like oh, fourteen see? year old oh, me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Was really and I bet you never that. had one until now, <laughs> yeah, right? I never had one until now. Uh, how fun. I'd love to see you playing that. That would just be such a great image to I've see. I've been with practicing that. my tapping all night long. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. It definitely dude, it, it definitely wants to shred. Well, welcome to the show. It is program number three hundred and sixty four of our beloved smoking and toasting. That's um if I'm doing the math correctly here, that's uh halfway to four hundred. And I really appreciate the you were here to do the math yes, yes. because I was promised when we started this whole thing there would be no math. There would be no math I'm, I'm, whatsoever. Yeah, always a little, yeah, always a little frustrated when it comes <laughs> to trying to tabulate and calculate uh, these things. Uh, we welcome the return of one of our absolute favorite guests. You know him, you love him. He has oh, Alan's been here with us for a long time. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Please welcome back to the mic for smoking and toasting, Mr. Roberto Doxakis. <laughs> I thought it was Andrew. Thank you for having me, Cruz. That was that was what it was the last time I got it wrong. I am very very happy to be here. So I will now introduce it's a new name. Every time. I, 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 no, Greg Doxakis. So, we just call him Dox, and I have no, no idea. No, 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 this is what this is what it gets to my soul here. Yeah. Uh, so you, 364 shows. I think I've been to like 60, 363 of them. Right, pretty much. And yet, still, neither one of y'all will call me. The spiky fots. Uh, I, I have to. He I really have, wants to be I ha- the spiky I have fots. to refer to my. I'm going to get a T-shirt made, uh, and we all know why they call me the spiky fots because I'm a friend of the show, mm-hmm. and when I'm on ratings, <laughs> <laughs> I spike, baby. Sorry. But but just I love that. right right now in New Orleans, the station manager is going, "What is going on?" The rest, <laughs> just, like through the no, no 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 no. Right now, the station manager in New Orleans is thinking such a storied career, and the one thing you wish you had said is, "Welcome to Radio Land." <laughs> Oh my God! I just I just spit Shiner Bach all over the microphone. That, that that's another thing. That Good night, everybody. Thanks for joining. <laughs> so so here's a funny thing I one. Hadn't I, uh, I showed up to a gig the other day, and I put my microphone on my stand, and I walk up to sing through it, and I'm like, "This smells like cigar." <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that uh, is a nice segue, actually. A uh, big thanks to last week's special guest, Lizzie May, the artist and owner of El Cuerpo Roto. We were out there in Old Town Spring, and boy, did we have fun. What a cool it place, right? It was so right? awesome, and we just enjoyed sitting around, smoking cigars, talking about things. And she has this art gallery, the upstairs of which is a cigar lounge. Yeah. It's just just wonderful. Super cool Plus, place. she had some uh, single malt scotch that we rather enjoyed yes, as well. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Bay River was really nice. Kind of yeah, fun. Really nice. Was yeah. it on Thursday? Uh, it was. Well, oh, we, Monday. we recorded it, uh, you know, a, a week ago Monday. Monday, yes. And it, it was uh, fun driving. It so it was nice and cold out there, but you yeah. got out there and oh, get to drink yeah. that single malt. Must have gone we, down we got to watch a truck. We got to watch a truck just about get sideways. Yeah, oh, yeah. Boy. <laughs> I got to watch one get all the way sideways. <laughs> yeah, it was, it, was, it was not pretty driving conditions. And today when we go home. But it was we're worth taping, it. It's just going to be flooded everywhere. That's so. Yes. It's just like doing the show. You really don't understand what we sacrifice to be here and do this. You're just thinking, oh, they get to drink and smoke cigars. Well, like the mailman. Yeah, it's not all fun and games, my yeah. friend. That's yeah. like the mailman. Yeah. Through the- By the way, I, I'm glad you mentioned that because I want to bring this up. When I lived in Boston, 
where it snows, you know, pretty pretty liberally in in the wintertime. Uh, I remember this one particular time when there was a big snowstorm, and it was announced on the news that the postal carriers would not be delivering mail that day because of the snowstorm. And I thought, whatever happened to through Come rain, rain or sleet snow, or snow, whatever sleet. the uh, the old saying was. But Dark yeah, of I, night. Apparently, that's only to a point. And then after that. <laughs> Within yeah. reason. Yeah, after that, it's like, now. Nah, and then there was it. child labor laws. Yeah. There was all this other stuff that they're doing well, nowadays. And you know why it is? Because postal workers are technically government employees, which yes. means they cannot be fired. So they just basically said, yeah, I'm not going out in that. And <laughs> enough of them said that. And the post office had to say, okay. No mail today. But anyway. I, Just I like when Domino's reneged their 30-minute delivery or less promise. Yeah, exactly. U.S. Postal 30 Service. minutes unless it takes us a little longer, <laughs> in which case, yeah. The, uh, but I don't know how we got that far afield. I just know that we often do. <laughs> so welcome to the show. We are so glad to have you here. Uh, Docs is here from Maison Ferrand and Plantation Rum. He has a big announcement, some news. We'll probably hold that until the very last segment of the show just to try to keep you in suspense. Also, it'll make Docs go nuts by then. Yeah, yeah. No, we won't. We'll, we'll, we'll get to that. In, he might uh, explode. Can I tell him now? We'll get to that in just a minute. You can if you want. But, can I tell him now? But it's going gonna, it's gonna to take. It's going to kind of take over the show, I think, when it happens. So we'll we'll, we'll reserve that for a little bit later. Because we have stuff to do, like the mystery beverage. The and, mystery uh, beverage. Yeah, so the mystery beverage is one that I brought in. Uh, basically, there's not a lot of rules to the mystery beverage, except we're drinking it before anyone other than the person who brought it in knows Ooh. what it is. Sometimes it's a seltzer. Sometimes it's a canned cocktail. Sometimes it's a beer. It sometimes it's a spirit. Apple it smells yeah. apple It's pineapple. Pineapple, I get that. Pineapple, pineapple on the nose. yeah, yeah. All right, you're you're pretty good with this. Uh, oh. So take a taste and tell me what you think, gentlemen. Is it a? Is it like a? It's it's a. I'll tell you what it is. Something. It is freaking awful. It's not, what it is. <laughs> it's not something I want to drink. It's sticky. I have just malorted you. It's not malort. <laughs> you got me. But you get the uh, you get the uh, uh, the the thing. Yeah. So, so definitely got a smack to the taste, but when yeah, you and, get it like not a, a good a, one. Yeah, like you know, the, the, the sticky, the sticky like uh, left in the mouth. Yeah. A little uh, medicine-y. little medicine <laughs> leftovery yeah. almost. Well, I have had this for a little while. I don't know why I got it. It makes me drinking it for a little while. But I've had this for a little while, and I reserved it until today to bring it in because Dox's company makes one of my absolute favorite rums, the uh, Stiggins Fancy Pineapple Mm -hmm. uh, Rum. And I thought it would be good to compare and contrast that with... Uh, Pineapple rum. Oh, is this a... I was going to go there. Buchanan's pineapple, pineapple whiskey. Oh, pineapple oh, it ain't whiskey. Good. It is not good. And and so I'm I'm pretty sure that they add actual pineapple Buchanan. flavor. No, two to, to great bad taste that shouldn't go together. But that's that's, that's not how you do you guys do it. It's you no. guys do it with the uh, with wood staves, correct? Yeah, or it, staves from actual pineapples. No, well, no, there's no such thing as staves from pineapples. So um, staves from pineapple trees? No, no. Uh, <laughs> good, but they, keep, but keep they, going. They this gently massage the pineapples <laughs> over the rum. No, no, no. We're, 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 I don't know what they're doing here. And honestly, this has caught my eye before, and I was curious about it. I, I don't think it's awful. Uh, Ooh, I I just, it's just it's not my. Oh, my, my I, I I've love it. Says I've had worse. Um, it says it, it says spirit drink. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this is not know. a whiskey. It's a wow. spirit the, drink. That's like we always talk about high crafted C that with... your mom used to serve you. High C juice drink. Juice drink. Yeah. drink. High, crafted with scotch whiskey, pineapple, citrus, and other natural flavors. Juice like substance. Uh, so, so, yeah, how do you guys do it? Drink. So, yeah, we, we actually do a true distillate with it. So, we're taking our three star rum, uh, which is made from Barbados, Jamaica, and Trinidad rums. And then we're going to take the skin of the pineapple. We distill uh, that in the cognac still. We'll take the meat of the pineapple and let that soak with our original dark rum uh, and then blend them together and put it back inside the barrel, let it age for about six months longer. So, and nice. in, in, in also we experimented with over 100 varieties of uh, pineapples. And, oh, really? Uh, yeah. And um, I didn't realize there were 100 varieties. Yeah, of neither did I. <laughs> and you can, you know, you guys, you've met Alexander before, and you yeah. ask him about it, and he'll tell you that he had to have pineapple for breakfast for like six months straight, <laughs> you know, to, to kind of figure this out. And, and as luck would have it, we found the most expensive variety of pineapple. <laughs> of course, to that use. was the uh, one, yeah. They're called Victorian pineapples, they're small, juicy pineapples. And we haven't done this in a while just because just traveling has been such a hard thing to do in January lately. 
but it used to be the European team and the American team uh, going up to Bombonet out there in France. And we would have a pineapple cutting party because we still cut the pineapples to make this stuff. And we everything we use everything except for the very bottom part and the top husk. So inevitably there would be just a, a husk fight going <laughs> from across the, across the room after uh, three hours of cutting pineapples and doing laybacks. Yeah, things got fun. Well, we're gonna have a uh, a husk throwing contest on today's show, and the uh, the loser takes that bottle. Home. <laughs> takes this bottle. Yeah. Home. You know, so so I have to tell you, there's some 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 nice modern touches. To this like yeah. they have a, a screw top, which is very yeah. modern. It's yes. not like those stodgy old corks that people use. <laughs> Also, it has the ability, like, I think after one sip to give me instant heartburn. Yes, like, it's, it does oh. have that. Uh, and and unscrew the top, it's got another wonderful feature. Oh, it's got the little pour top, because so, that way you don't drink it too fast. <laughs> right? So you don't pour too much in your glass. That would be a crime. That would be something Wait, very Wait, is this whole very, top very of this plastic and just an insert? In it is. And I, I tried pulling it out, and I couldn't do it. So. <laughs> That's what she said. Yeah. So, uh, so, <laughs> so uh, yeah, I, I want you all to know just what, what, what deep dive that was for me just now, because I spent all day in bed, you know, uh, hungover. And in mourning over the Texans season, so uh, that was for, for, that, for that to be my first drink since uh, my recovery was uh, yeah, not a good thing. Yeah, I have so. loaded both of you and you too. Jerry, <laughs> yeah, so. uh, I mean, yeah, uh, yeah. So was, well, uh, Ian, uh, wondering, there's, there's no help for that. Yeah, let's let's get your mind off of it. Maybe you can tell us about uh, something you had the opportunity to smoke this week. I can. I can tell you all about a Hoya de Nicaragua, um, uh, Cinco de Cinco. Oh. So I had to look back. You know, whenever I'm going to pick out a cigar, I have to look back in my notes to make sure I haven't tried it before. Yeah. Because it looked kind of familiar. Uh, apparently, a while back, they had a Quattro de Cinco. Now they have the Cinco de Cinco. Mm-hmm. Uh, this uh, Robusta Gorda coming in at five and a half uh, inches by 54 ring gauge. Uses a Mexican San Andreas wrapper, Nicaraguan binder, Nicaraguan filler. The appearance on this medium brown, uh, leathery to the touch, oily uh, overall, firm feel uh, on this box press with a single green band that has the Cinco de Cinco on it. The, uh, the oops, I just got past the prelate sniff on this. Earth and chocolate. I didn't put much else because it's, it was pretty simple. Mm-hmm. The prelate draw on this, I, I used a punch. It had a late draw. Uh, sweet, creamy coffee, uh, mocha, earth. The initial light on this, Nicaraguan pepper blast right out the box. Nicaraguan pepper blast settles into a... Um, or followed by earth and sweet mocha and uh, coffee retro hills woody and mocha. The first third of this Nicaraguan pepper blast settles in a sweet and spicy background with mocha and coffee as the predominant flavors. Hints of nuttiness, oak, and earth add interest. Retro hills, sweet chocolate, coffee, solid ash, uneven burn. Mm. Um, I tended the burn, still burning uneven. Woody notes move forward. Sweet coffee and chocolate remain consistent. Nutty cashew and rich earthiness run th- uh, run throughout. Retro Hale's sweet chocolate, coffee, and cedar. Solid ash, uneven burn. Uh, the last third is tended the burn, still burning, uneven. Flavors remain true. A pleasant sweetness is left on the lips. Retro Hale's sweet chocolate, coffee, cedar, and a kiss of spice. Solid ash. Sounds great. Uneven burn. Except for the uneven burn. Price to quality. Fantastic flavors. Disappointing burn. This is an $18 cigar. Holy moly. I thought, oh, yeah. Did, did, uh, Flavor-wise, 100%. I thought those were inexpensive, yeah. No, flavor-wise, 100% worth it. Amazing flavor. The burn was annoying. It burned uneven no matter how many times I tended it. Gets a 4.5 because of that. It just okay. didn't It didn't smoke like an $18 cigar. No, it tasted no. like one that was that's good. A, that's a super premium price, and a burn like that is not yeah. a super premium nope, thing. not at all. All right, got to take a break. When we come back, I'll tell you about my cigar this week. I'll give you a little hint. It's, uh, it, it's, it was a Latitude Zero cigar, which I know sounds like a movie starring The Rock. But it's actually a cigar, and I'll tell you why. Coming up, it's Smoking and Toasting. Welcome back. It's Smoking and Toasting. Our program is all about craft beer, fine spirits, and hand-rolled cigars. And I'd like to really thank Ian, who gave me the Shiner Bach for the show beer. And I'd like to thank the folks at Shiner Beer, because this is doing a really nice job of cleansing my palate Getting from that horrible Buchanan's, Buchanan's pineapple, pineapple. Uh, whiskey. Ooh, 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 that was not good. Uh, so I mentioned that the cigar that I uh, smoked for the show this week was the Latitude Zero. Notice how we smoke a cigar for the show. 
That's mm-hmm. it's, it's giving. It's what we do. It's it's what <laughs> we, it's how we give of we ourselves. We have to sacrifice these moments of our lives. That's right. In order to, to make this you know, work, tell you what it might be like. Uh, Latitude Zero, I smoked the Signature Toro. And to start out, this was a gorgeous cigar. In fact, Adam will probably super up if you're watching the video a uh, picture of it, like over here or maybe here, or possibly there over my head. Right uh, over your face. <laughs> It's severe box pressed, uh, a smooth but oily reddish brown wrapper, and a very classy, pleasant uh, presentation with an elegant band and a ribbon foot. The name Latitude Zero is actually not a Dwayne Johnson movie. It's a reference to Ecuador and an homage to the company that they get their tobacco from, the Oliva Tobacco Company, which, by the way, is different from Oliva Cigars. Mm. Oliva is not an uncommon name in that part of the world. Gotcha. Oliva Cigars and Oliva Tobacco Company are two different things, and they use two different tobaccos, or a lot of different tobaccos. Anyway, Oliva Tobacco has a huge growing area there in Ecuador, and that's where the wrapper leaf of uh, Latitude Zero comes from. It's an Ecuadorian Habano wrapped around a Nicaraguan Habano binder, and fillers that are Dominican Habano, Connecticut Broadleaf, and Nicaraguan Habano. So there's a lot going on, a lot of uh, Habano leaf uh, stuff in both the the uh, filler and in the binder. Pre-light sniff and the cold draw gave me notes of cedar and oak, along with cinnamon and a hint of raisin. I used a punch, I added flame, and off I went. Uh, based on the appearance of the wrapper and the fact that I knew that it had some broadleaf and some Nicaraguan tobacco mm-hmm. in it, I had braced myself for a very spicy Nicaraguan pepper blast and I did not get one. Not at all. Mm -mm. There was some spice from the very beginning, but it wasn't just pepper. In in fact, I I had a hard time pinning down what it was, Uh, and and I never did. So I'm just going to call it the mystery spice because it was spicy, but not in a pepper way. I I don't know how to explain it except to call it the mystery spice. That seems appropriate. Uh, Mystery spice left a very pleasant tingle on my tongue that lasted pretty much throughout the whole smoke. There were also notes of malt, cedar, and leather at play during the first third with nice complexity and an almost perfect burn. Second third added a citrus zest that worked pretty well with the mystery spice. I did wind up touching it up after I flicked the first ash off because it looked like it might start burning a little wonky, but the construction remained solid and it probably would have burned its way through by itself just fine. Uh, in that final third, uh, not just malt, but malted milk balls. Mm, Remember those? Yes. Yeah. Which I haven't had since I was about 13 years old. <laughs> right. you know? uh, it was also creamy, so it kind of reminded me of like a chocolate malt, which they used to sell at drugstores back in the day and now are really, really hard to actually find. They're just shakes, and mm-hmm. not malts. Mystery Spice continued, and that was awesome because it was my favorite thing about the cigar. A very different uh, taste from the pepper forward vibe that I usually uh, get from most Nicaraguan cigars, and I really, really liked it. Uh, great construction, great flavor. But what I am most excited to report is that the Latitude Zero Toro, it's only about a $7 cigar. Ooh. So at that price, enjoying it as much as I did, I can't go less than a six. So bravo nice. for uh, Latitude Zero. And of course, as we uh, explain from time to time, our price to quality yeah, scale, quality it's scale. a one to 10 scale, but a five means you got exactly what you paid for. So this overperformed its price a bit. Love it. Enough to get a six. So, all right. We have news from, uh, from Doc's. We'll get to that uh, next, and uh, also I'm excited to get to a little tasting. I haven't even told you about the beers we're tasting, so we'll do that coming up. And Doc has some some somethings in the bag some, some, that he has not revealed surprises. to us yet. So we will look forward to that all coming up. It is smoking and toasting, and we'll be right back. Welcome back. It's smoking and toasting. Our show is all about craft beer, fine spirits. And hand rolled cigars. Our guest is uh, Docs. Greg Docsack is one of our absolute favorite guests, even if we don't get his name right all the time. Uh, it is always always a pleasure to have you uh, in the studio with us, or or wherever we are. We gotta we gotta do another uh, we gotta do another on location with you somewhere so we can uh, have cigars. Have that's cigars. Yeah, that's an awesome idea. We we did we did one in your uh, backyard actually. That was uh, pretty. We did. That was a lot show. of fun. Yeah, we yeah. we'd go crash Melcher's RV and go do a show there. Ooh, I like that idea. Yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll just show up. Hey, pal. <laughs> <laughs> Open the RV door at the end of the show. It'll be like the Cheech and Chong car exit scene. <laughs> the van. <laughs> this bathroom's for anybody, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, well, we got to all kinds of fun stuff that I see. Doc's brought 
brought to taste. I'm really looking forward to that, as I always do when it's uh, plantation rum. But also, we have some beers to taste from uh, 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 from Stetsy Brewing Company. Their Bohemian Lager. Stetsy is located in Love Lady, Texas, which I don't know where that is, but I feel like I probably got a massage there one time. Uh, <laughs> it's, uh, I, I don't know. Do you, anybody know where Love Lady is? No. Uh, 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 okay. Also from Sierra Nevada. Now, I know where Chico, California is. That's where, C- uh, where Sierra Nevada calls home. We'll be tasting their sunny little thing. It's a citrus wheat ale. And as you know, uh, Sierra Nevada... They were best known for their pale ale for years, and then they released the hazy little thing, and mm-hmm. that actually eclipsed it. That's their Took number one everything. beer. Yeah, that's their number one beer now, and it's very good. So they're excited about the sunny little thing. And then from Incendiary Brewing Company, uh, a barrel-aged imperial stout called Untethered Angel, which Ooh. sounds promising. That sounds super yeah, dramatic. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Spirits from Docs, of course, and we'll get to those here in just a uh, couple of moments. We also will be bringing you drinking news, our... Uh, celebrated, I'm not sure why, celebrated segment on the show. Uh, That'll be in the second hour. And our drinking news teaser headline is Choose Your Battles Wisely. All right, so we will get to that. In the meantime, uh, Ian has poured our first beer, and it is a Stetsy Bohemian Lager. And I thought, Ian, uh, I, I didn't know what to expect really from this beer. Don't know what to expect, but it does. I will say this: the design on the can kind of looks like, yeah, my cousin Carol does graphics on her computer. We'll have her make the design. <laughs> That's for this a little beer. busy. It, it just doesn't. It's not. A, it's not a. It doesn't flow. It's a little busy. The colors are kind of funny. Yeah, oh, look, it's got kind of a retro look. Brewed to in it. an old world fashion, using bittering and aromatic hops. Mm-hmm. But I love the idea of calling it Bohemian Lager. That just sounds like Enjoy that makes it more happiness. interesting, right? Nevase uh, Dravai Stetsi. I don't know okay. what that means. Yeah. Uh, um, beer is proof that God loves us and wants us to be happy. A, f- a phrase attributed to our uh, Ben Franklin. Czech brewmasters have uh, a similar saying. Uh, I don't know how to say this. Dejbu Stetsi. Give, uh, God gives happiness. Our Bohemian lager brewed using only... Uh, uh, Pilsner and Munich malts, a balance of bittering and aromatic hops, and uh, extended cold fermentation. I'll tell you that it's an on, interesting flavor. On the nose, it, it smells like beer. Like you know that that you're not wrong thing when you walk into like a a brew pub where they brew their own yes. or into a brewery yes. and it has that beer smell. Mm-hmm. That's what this smells like on the nose. Uh, on the taste, however. Interesting. It's not good. Really? I, I, I like kind of like it. I like it. It's not good. Yeah. I kind of like it. What is it that I you don't like? I feel like this is a mistake and it's gone wrong. <laughs> so, no, no. What is it that you don't like about I, this? Because I kind of dig it. No, there's uh, something wrong with the tail end of this beer. It That bitterness and, and like weird, oh, there's something off with it. Really? Cause, yeah. Because I kind of like it. I, it no, almost no, has, I, would, I would literally send this back if someone gave me this at a bar. It almost has like Doritos effect going on. Mm. At, at yeah, the, like almost yeah. a cidery taste at the very end or mm. something. No, like no, a, that's, that's a, a off flavor. The, that's not, that's uh, not good. It, well, this was not me trying to malort you. Uh, no, no, something's wrong with that. <laughs> I, 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 I can see you thinking that it was maybe incomplete. It's not the most, it doesn't have a lot of depth to it, but I, I think the flavor's nice. I'll tell you what, though, with that can, I'll tell you what you don't like about the can. It's like got that primer gray on there. Mm. If they went with like a gold underneath all that, it'd look a lot better. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it it's, just doesn't make that aftertaste better. It's not it, good. It's <laughs> got that Bondo has been applied uh, uh, look to it, right? <laughs> uh, I like it. Yeah, I, I like it too. It, it doesn't yeah. It doesn't offend yeah, me at all. So. Uh, so you like it, Tim? Yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. down with it. So Ian's, right. Ian's the odd I stand by this. You're, you're, you're off the off. aisle, and Ian yeah, stand exactly. outside. I think it's off. I think they either went for something, and something went wrong in the canning. There's an off flavor. Something's gone wrong with this beer. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Well, it's I'd, not my fault. You I'd, guys like off flavors. I drink it. Says <laughs> says the Malort guy. <laughs> I mean, I don't drink, my lord. I make yeah. you people drink it. <laughs> <laughs> Which is exactly my, was exactly I, my plan. In my defense, I, every time I made you drink it, I've drank it myself. That's true. You have. And I drank the whiskey along with you today, that this, um, that terrible pineapple whiskey. <laughs> that was bad. I, I, th- I think somebody woke up on the wrong side of the humidor today. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think it may be. Uh, I'm just going to complain about everything today. <laughs> Your mic's sitting funny. Uh, we, uh, we've been promising this for a while, and 
and we just haven't gotten to it. So hopefully we'll get to it today. Uh, uh, interesting article I uh, chanced across about what sodas to pair with cigars. So we're looking uh, yeah, forward so to we that. We talked about that a so, couple weeks yeah. ago. I, I can really compare a good Diet Dr. Pepper with a cigar, but I'm trying to drink less of those than I used to. You should drink a lot of them. Uh, you know, it's all about Jones Green Apple Soda. Oh, you're a fan of the Green Apple. The Green Apple. You're soda a fan of the Green amazing. Apple Soda, but you don't like this Pilsner. The Pilsner is not good. Green Apple Soda is delicious. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I <laughs> not all Green Apple Soda. And Green Apple Jones, Jones specifically, but even Jones. That's an acquired taste. And it's I almost think. the color of my truck. What what cigar <laughs> would you pair it with? With a Jones Green Apple Soda? Yeah. Oh, something definitely on the light side. We probably yeah. have to go with a Fuente. Mm. Fuente, Fuente. Maybe get one of uh, uh, Jim Himes' Candelas that he's uh, from. Right. Yeah, that might work. With a, Definitely uh, something nice because it's got a little bit of sour to it. So we'll we'll try to get to that. Um, so, Doc, just here, this is not necessarily exclusive news. I mean, the word is out a little bit about this, but he's here to, to talk about a change at the home of one of the, you know, most incredible lines of rum that exist today. There's a change at plantation. Uh, tell us what's up. Yeah, we've we've made we've followed through our commitment. That's the big thing to understand here. Is this is a commitment we, we made. Uh, oh gosh, oh, three years ago, uh, it was the summer of 2020. It was, it was it was a terrible summer for a lot of people for a lot of reasons. Not mm-hmm. only we're still on lockdown, but a lot of angry in the people in the streets, and for a pretty good reason. Um, and you know, we've been talking about uh, the the ramifications, or, or the, not the ramifications, but just uh, sort of the, the 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 kind of uncomfortable feeling that goes along with the name plantation, even though it was never chosen as an ode to anything here in the United States. It was simply a chosen a name twenty uh, something years ago. A plantation is a farm. It's a sugarcane farm. It's what you call a yeah. sugarcane field. They still refer to it as that. And that was just the only uh, uh, intention was to pay homage to the cane, which you'll hear Alexander say quite a bit. You know, that's something that he's very passionate about is that rum starts with sugarcane. Now, we don't have sugarcane rums. We have molasses. But guess where molasses comes from? Sugarcane. Thank you. Mm-hmm. So that was why that name was chosen. But just we could not ignore that fact anymore. We couldn't keep putting that asterisk on there saying, don't worry about it. That's not what it means. Don't worry about it. Just we, we, it, it just it, we couldn't keep doing that. Um, it brings up a lot of uh, uh, nasty imagery for a lot of people. And simply, that's just not who we are. We are not cool with uh, making people unhappy. We want to make people happy. So we finally committed. Uh, we did commit. And we finally came up with the name. Uh, and moving forward, we'll start to see the, the product start to bleed in over the next few months or so. But moving forward, Plantation Rum will henceforth be known as Plantare Rum. Plantare. P-L-A-N-T-E-R-A-Y. Plantare. Plantare. So it's not planetary. Not planetary. It's Plantare. 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 So uh, what does Plantare mean? Plantare, it's, uh, well, it's a word that we uh, came up with ourselves. I'm like, let's make it up. Oh, and, it's like Google. And, li- and like Thor says in, in the, you know, with the Avengers uh, Endgame, uh, are all words are made up. But so it, it's, you know, <laughs> we... Uh, um, Thor has the best line. <laughs> so, no, we wanted something that was ours and all ours. So we came up with one. Um, and basically Plantare is paying homage still to the sugarcane in the form of a plant, but also acknowledging the role that the sun plays in growing. Said plant, mm-hmm. and right. you can see it on our, on our on our logo for years. You have the sun rays there. Sure. So we're taking something that was already ours and just kind of putting it into words. And you know, go ahead. So there's going to be two, I guess at least two, but two definite responses to what you're doing. Well, we've got a lot more than that. Well, well but I mean, uh, <laughs> of there'll be of at least you know at least one of these two types would be what I would guess a lot of response would be. One would be, that's great. It's good that you're doing this voluntarily, that you're, you know, that you're looking to be, you know, inclusive, not divisive. And then the other one would be, well, you've given into the woke mob and you're, uh, you're, you know, uh, that wasn't what you meant. So why should you have to change it? Yep. I want to make sure that I understand. Was there external pressure on Maison Ferran to change and stop using the word plantation? Uh were, were there groups boycotting or no 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 serious boycotts we we would have some sounding off on social media and that sort of thing and then you'd find the occasional uh you know person on on on, on that would have their own podcast that would try to get like boycotts going and it would always fall short and i think the reason for that is because people saw us clearly even though they might have been uncomfortable with the name they knew that's not what we meant and again kind of just you know I'm not well, gonna say I'm not gonna say gave us a pass on it, but, but it softened the blow. So at least like, understood. I, I get it. If I get it, if someone is going to have a 
negative connotation to that to some degree, but there's a, there's a lot of people out there who want to be victims and want to uh, make it their big deal, whatever it is. I'm I, glad you I guys that, didn't fall victim to right. that. I, I, I agree thing. that people, people seem to be looking for reasons to be outraged. <clears throat> I get that. But I don't think that's what the case was here necessarily. This wasn't because of economic pressure. No. Uh, this, you know, like the Bud Light thing, for example. No, no, no. Uh, no. When they, you know, backed off of all of that because of the. Well, to be honest, so, some, we, we had a couple of your Bud Light now when we did change it, um, which was silly. Um, and, and this is the thing, uh, you know. Well, I've tasted Bud Light and I've tasted your <laughs> rum. You are most They're definitely vastly different. not Bud Light. But, but this is the thing that we've been. Ta- I've been with the company now for almost eight years, and we've been talking about it for eight years. It's something right. that we, as a company, and when I say company, it's gotten bigger. But you know, back when I first started the company, it was twenty people in one room for the annual meetings. Wow. And we would discuss this and discuss this, and you know, we we you know the owner of the company, the man that owns the whole shebang, uh, you know, we talk a lot. A lot. I'm very, com- I'm, 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 I'm very fortunate that I'm working for a global company that still I have pretty good access to the guy that has the final say on everything. And that's cool. not bragging. We all do. He's just a, he's, he's a very involved guy. Uh, he puts all of his money back into the company, puts all of his attention back into the company. So but having said that, it, it's, uh, um, you know, I, it was not a political move. It was not a pressure move. It was this is the right thing to do. Move. I see. And I really applaud that because I think it, if you can. By making a change like that, be less potentially negative Ooh. to a certain uh, yeah. group of people. I just don't see what is lost by doing it. I I do have trouble with people who manufacture outrage. I think yeah. there's way too much of that. But I'm yeah. kind of glad that this is you guys being proactive, saying, you know, that is not necessarily what we want people to think about it even though it's not what we intended and i think it makes sense to just change it plus plantare plantare yeah it's a a pretty cool name you have to give it a little bit of european and a little bit of caribbean plantare plantare Plantare. i I, kind of like it and in fact i'm I'm sitting looking at these little bottles that you have here does that have the new label on it uh, i'm thinking plantare kind of Kind of fits. Well, you know? uh, we have, I got some images uh, uh, to Terry. If you can maybe get throw them yeah. up there, you'll we'll see it. It, 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 yeah. it looks great on a label. I know we're about to run out of time in this segment. Yeah. Yeah. We're about to run out of time. No, no, we've we got two minutes. Yeah. Okay, cool. Minutes, yeah. So everything that you're thinking, everything that you're feeling when you first hear the word plante, I felt it, man. I've yeah. known about this word for a while now. I've known that it's been the decision for a little bit now, and it took all of us some to, to get some, uh, uh, you know, accustomed to it because you're changing our baby's name. It's anything's going to sound weird, you know. So, but it was until I saw it on a label, I went, "This is the one. This yeah. is the right one." Because we had five different. Uh, uh, um, uh, well, agencies that we uh, uh, hired to come up with something, and it all fell flat, all of it. And sometime when we're having a drink on a quiet note, I'll tell you some of those bad names. We, uh, <laughs> when we had to rename, when we had to rename our show, we went out to all the experts and asked, "What, what can we call it?" Did you have to rename it? Yes, it was originally called Sip, Smoke, and Savor, mm-hmm. and the uh, there was apparently a company in uh, San Diego, California, that sells. Uh, like strawberries, Stra- and chocolate, chocolate covered strawberries and wine, and they called it sip and savor. And, and they have and they, cigars or something. So they did, like- they did what all companies do when they have a legal issue with someone using a name. They contacted us on Facebook. <laughs> and they said, "It's nice that you guys have a hobby and all, but this is our business." That's like, literally yeah. how the so, note, how the note went. So went to our attorney. He says, "Look, we can fight it, but you know, it's going to be more hassle than you want. If you're not just absolutely married to the name, just come up with a better one." And so we contacted all the experts. Nothing. And then Ian calls me one day and goes, "How about smoking and toasting?" And I was like, "I love it." And that is what we changed it to. Can, so, can we find like a segment at like the next anniversary party where we all try to keep strawberries lit, <laughs> <laughs> or where we get lit from eating strawberries? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, even that would uh, would work pretty well. So, yeah. So anyway, I, well, I applaud you guys. I think Thank it's you. I think it's a, a good move. It's a gutsy I think, move. Yeah. I think you made it thoughtfully. It wasn't a a, a knee jerk reaction to something, and uh, I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna like drinking Plantare. How did I say that? Plantain. You nailed it, baby. Okay. All right. Fair enough.
Thank you, Andrew. Uh, we will uh, take a break, <laughs> and we'll be uh, right back in just a moment. Still lots to come on the show, including more tastings, and I'm excited about tasting some of what's in these little bottles here. We're going to celebrate with some of this Buchanan's pineapple. By the way, I saw ass. Terry was drinking more of his during the segment, and oh. I was like, oh, oh man. No, I was sniffing the... I was trying to get ready for what we have oh. going on with I you. guess. <laughs> whatever, whatever works for you. <laughs> Welcome back. It's Smoking and Toasting. Our show is all about craft beer, fine spirits, and hand-rolled cigars. Uh, there's a startup company in Greenland that is now shipping ice to cocktail bars in uh, the uh, uh, in the Middle East. And they are shipping ice taken from thousand-year-old glaciers. I bring this up because years ago, I flew to Iceland and uh, was doing a promotion with Iceland Air at the radio station that I worked at at the time. So they flew me in first class on Iceland Air mm -hmm. because I would never be able to afford to actually <laughs> get a first class <laughs> ticket, right? It'd be nice. But And in first class, they served drinks with a cube of ice that was taken from a thousand year old, uh, a thousand plus year old uh, glacier. So according to... Um, According to the people from the company, this ice has been compressed over millennia. It's completely without bubbles, and it melts more slowly than regular ice. I don't know. I, I thought my drink was delicious, but I don't, know, I don't know if I could have really told the difference based on the ice. I just thought this is interesting because if you are in a bar in Dubai, you can now get a, a, a you know— with a scotch with a, a, a Greenland a, ice, a little bit of a Greenland a, a glacier, thousands of year old, yeah, years old, years old, a little bit of Greenland uh, glacier. With my luck, I get ice. a thousand year old bug in mine. <laughs> <laughs> well, I they, was wondering, like you know, like you, you can't just freeze seawater and it would be good, yeah, right? So right, like, right. I'm wondering how pure the water is. I don't know. Well, they gotta get tested. Yeah, I'm mm -hmm. sure. I'm sure they do. But you know, the the people who talk to us all the time about global warming warming always say that you know the icebergs are melting anyway so now we're chopping more ice out of them that's not going to help that's talk about help. making no, we're, lemon, we're lemon, lemon, lemons out of lemon <laughs> eliminating <laughs> our lemons there man yeah. we're <laughs> melting them in our drinks well, we, man you know, it's exactly let's make some cocktails yeah, what the I hell it's, it's falling down anyway <laughs> the ice went the way of the buffalo <laughs> that's right <laughs> Uh, so, Docs, what have you poured us here? I, I don't know what these little bottles this are. This is so. rum. So we have uh, we have some rums. Here. I like rum. These these are uh, some little beauties that I have actually uh, not uh, designated a buyer for yet. I don't know oh. who I don't know who's going to have them. So uh, so when you say designated a buyer, these would be like oh. one of those limited releases limited that would release only be about, at one retailer, yeah, right? About twenty three okay. six packs each. And this one that we're trying right now is one that I had no idea we even had this stuff. This is punchy and funky. Punchy and funky. That's why I call y'all two behind your backs. <laughs> I'll let I'll, I'll let y'all decide which one's which. So uh, it's the punchy and say, punchy show. Welcome to the punchy, the punchy and funky show. I uh, <laughs> yeah, funk, funk, so, funk, funk, funk. So um, <laughs> <laughs> look what this is degenerated into. Meanwhile, back in the studio, it happens uh, whenever so, it happens whenever we have docs on. Have you noticed this? <laughs> gets, out, gets out of hand. I mean, this seriously, this is funky and it is wonderful. So, so this is one I came across these barrels back when I was there. Oh gosh, well, I, in October, uh, and we have Spanish Spanish rum. This is from Spain. From uh, as, does that, uh, that mean that the sugar cane is grown in Spain? Uh, well, I'm going to say yes because well, because uh, guys, here's the thing: I know what you know about this rum. What's on this label right now? Okay. I'm okay. I have not had a chance to learn it myself here, but I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to. Uh, um, well, we do know that that's a country where the rain stays mainly in the plain. Yeah. I don't know how that. <laughs> Thank would, you for saying that. I don't I don't know know Thank that you. Would, <laughs> it was it was just eating at me. <laughs> I, I don't know, I don't know how that would impact the sugar cane, but uh, 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 it helps the growth of the sugar cane by whatever. staying mainly you know, on the plain. I knew plane. one day we'd break into song. I was going to show you this episode. <laughs> oh. It's a, you I it. think she's got it. <laughs> you missed it. I sang a, a version of Oh Christmas Tree uh, a couple of shows ago. You missed, totally missed it. You should have been there. Were you doing all deep voiced and stuff? No, I did. I, Ian accompanied me on the ukulele. It was, uh, yeah. Backed him up. It was uh, for drinking news. It was a special moment. Tonight on a very special <laughs> Smoke and Toast Day special. So this is really good. So uh, it, you guys clearly have some barrels of this well, well, right th yeah th well, this is one of our distillery partners you know we have does this a, have a 
wine influence on it? Well, I'm glad you asked. No, it doesn't. Anyway, no. So uh, it does. <laughs> however, it, it does, like, like most of our single cast, there will be a tertiary aging here. That's not just going to be the bourbon barrels in Spain in this case. Uh, also, the uh, uh, Carnac barrels in France, of course. But that's going to spend eight months in a Pedro Jimenez sherry cask. So that's the wine you're getting there. What's, uh, what's that likely to retail for for a 750 milliliter bottle? Um, I'm going to guess about $60, $65 on this See, that's one. pretty good because I know yeah. some of your special ones that you release, mm-hmm. so I've seen it retail and they're more in the $100 uh, range, even some. even sometimes a little more. But uh, but for 60 but well, that'd be a great $60 bottle. This yeah. one's peppery. It starts off dry and sweetens up at the end mm-hmm. right there. But, but who knew Spain had rum? I didn't. I know. Mm-hmm. You know? I, I didn't I didn't either. This the, is, the, I'm, the, I'm the, just the, sitting the, here enjoying the aftertaste of it. I know. It's so is, great. Like I want to try and say this. This is the distillery. It's uh, Azu Azu. Azucarera, Azucarera de Guadalfio Distillery, um, and and I'm, I'm I'm assuming that's some sort of sugar, uh, Azu Azucarera. Maybe maybe that's a, a sugar mill. Mm. I don't know. I'm, I'm I'm speculating at this point. So I'm gonna guess yes. Pro, who knows? Maybe maybe the sugar canes from Spain. The the the, the, the <laughs> shut up. And the, but the rum definitely is. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, this rum is very, very good, and I will totally buy a bottle of that when that comes out. That's that's wonderful, absolutely. All right, uh, we have to take a break. We will be back. We got drinking news still ahead of us, and uh, lots more stuff to taste. It's smoking and toasting. Uh, welcome back. It is smoking and toasting. Our show is all about craft beer, fine spirits, hand rolled cigars, and anything else that we think of and want to talk about. So I, I have to. Um, I have to recommend a documentary to you, Ian, that I watched uh, over the weekend. Oh, yeah? uh, it's called Immediate Family, and it is about the studio musicians that basically were the whole California 70s sound. They weren't limited to that. Oh, the Wrecking Crew. Uh, no, the Wrecking Crew was... that was, oh, that uh, was more uh, 60s, huh? Right, and it, and it was more about... Uh, um, uh, Alabama and, and, all, and, all, and, right, and all that. These these were the guys like uh, Waddy Wachell, uh, Russ Kunkel, um, and and these were the guys that were on all of the you know Linda Ronstadt records and, and and but all the way through like into the eighties. Phil Collins. The, these guys. It's a really really good movie. They're amazing musicians, and it's just a, it was a joy to watch. So well, it was called what again? It's called Immediate Family. Immediate Family. Not to be confused with another movie called Immediate Family. That's a total like fiction thing. But this one is actually a documentary, and it is well worth watching for anybody who's kind of interested in the music business, which I know Sierra you are. Sierra Nevada, family-owned, operated, and argued over, it says right across the top. Yeah, yeah they've, they've had that slogan for a while, and I love it. <laughs> Sunny little thing, citrus wheat ale. So because their hazy little thing has been such a big success, Sierra Nevada has kind of expanded the line, if you will. So they've got uh, a... a Sour little thing, I think that's a, that's a sour with the same style of artwork. They've got a, a, a hazy big thing, I think, which is their double IPA, and now this is the uh, what is it little called? Sunny little thing. Sunny little thing. Which this is a wheat ale that is supposed to be very citrusy. This is very pretty citrusy. outrageously good. The, the nose delicious. just is mm, citrus. That's it's phenomenal. Like, this is orange. outrageously good. So one of my favorite things, you know, it we, totally is. You know, we have our dry curacao. Mm-hmm. One of my favorite things is putting dry curacao in a wheat beer. That you don't need it. That's perfect. Yeah. That's absolutely delicious. They hit, they hit yeah. the nail on the head here, didn't they? I this like this is so good. There's a creaminess to the mm-hmm. orange too. Um, it, it's like, almost like a combination of like wh- who is it that uh, Buffalo Bayou has that creamsicle uh, beer? Yeah, mm-hmm. it's a little bit like that, but it's got the citrus tang as well. It's not just yeah. creamy. You get you kind of get both yeah. of those things. This is this is hitting the nail on the head and driving it right in. This is amazing. This is really really. All right, because nice. if you didn't like this one, I was going to really have an issue. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'll allow you to not have liked the Bohemian Lager from the last segment. <laughs> can, I make, but, can I make a confession? Sure. So and and this is just something to demonstrate that uh, I do have my ego in check and I can make fun of myself. Something that no one would ever know about, but I'm about to tell the world what happened to me this past week. Okay. So one of my guilty pleasures is uh, Carbox. Uh, uh, peach uh, Love Street. It's just got a right. nice little touch of peach to it. It's just perfect. And I've tried some substitutes. I just haven't loved them. But the only way I've been able to find it is uh, uh, um, in the four pack or the the, the, the variety pack, which mm-hmm. you got to surf through the other ones to get to the four peaches I want, right? So I happen to That's be down- how they I, get you. I happen to be downtown and I was in the area and I pulled in and the front door was like, they weren't open yet. And I was like, this is where weren't they open yet. So I called him and I said, yeah, listen, I, I know you're not open yet, but I was really hoping to buy some of the uh, Love Street Peach. 
And the nice lady at Buffalo Brewing says, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's Carbach. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, you are correct. Sorry to bother you. <laughs> <laughs> At least she told you who it was. Yeah. Like, you know, she didn't go, yeah, no, I'm sorry. We don't have it. That, We're out. that was embarrassing. Yeah. She's, she's, telling, she's in a meeting right now telling a story. You wouldn't you believe this. Yeah. 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 Pretty sure that's the guy from the cognac company. Yeah. <laughs> there's, there's not really much that I can say about it since I, last time you were on the show, I introduced you as Andrew Duxakis. So. <laughs> uh, but see, that just gave us another uh, tradition to Silly continue. things except for me. Yeah. Absolutely. That's absolutely delightful. This is a wonderful beer, isn't it? And I just love that a brewery like Sierra Nevada, which is, you know, kind of in that same category, I guess, as like uh, uh, Boston Beer Company, Sam Adams, uh, kind of in the same uh, company as maybe like uh, St. Arnold here Mm -hmm. in Houston. They've been around for quite a while now. They're a little bit larger than your average craft brewery. But they still are innovative and still we, still doing good. You're time. right. I, I I want more. Now, where of can that. you get right that? Now. Where can you get that? Really good. Uh, so I got this at Specs, but I didn't buy it by itself. I bought it bought the, in a little thing, six pack uh, thing. A twelve pack. Okay. So it had a handful of these, a handful of uh, oh, the mixed hazy 12, little yeah. thing, and a handful of the hazy big thing. Oh, okay, okay. So and that sounds like a great uh, twelve pack. By I the may way. be getting another one on the way yeah. home because that's uh, <laughs> that's just really, really good, really, really good. Um, yeah, I, I I can't recommend that highly enough. That's and I'll be really honest. Good. I, I that was the last one in the pack because oh you I already one, had yep I opened <laughs> one and tasted it and I loved it so much that I literally stuck this one away so I wouldn't drink yeah, it so I could bring it in and, and he bought show. it on the way to the show today yeah. so you know. <laughs> yeah exactly exactly that is the that is the way uh, that it works so Doc you may have to go some to top the uh, the first. Rum that you poured us. Challenge accepted. Right. So this is the, <laughs> this is a 2012 land selection. What is a land selection? What is a land selection? What's I a don't, land selection? I, I don't know. Uh, I'm still trying to figure this out. Can you, <laughs> still can you working find out, on this. So, can you find out first what a land selection is? <laughs> so this is the reason why they called it land selection. Six different countries. Uh, mm-hmm. And I got I, I honestly can't remember all of them. But uh, we have had in the past, we've had uh, multi-island blends. Uh, mm-hmm. One of the most famous and popular ones was the one that Justin Burrow picked out for um, over at uh, Bad News Bar, you know, four or five years ago. Uh, but this one is not all islands. There's going to be some, uh, if I remember correctly, there is some South American in there. Um, I, I really don't remember all the countries. But, Ooh, this one's spicy. But, so it's going to be six different countries. They'll have a blend. It's uh, 12 years old total, but one and a half years extra aged in Muscatel wine casks. Mm-hmm. So it's super it's spicy. I don't yeah. want to say syrupy on the nose, but it's got a nice little mm-hmm. sweet quality to it that's pastry-like, mm-hmm. you know? Uh yeah, it's it's and super silky on the palate. The mouthfeel, yeah, the mouthfeel is so smooth and 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 silky is the right word, not smooth. Um, but yeah, it's so silky and delicious. And then there's a little heat from it that just starts to spread the palate in such a pleasant way. This is really really so, good. Super molasses on the nose. Yep. Yes, and you get a little molasses like once you get past the heat that's at the first part of the finish. And that kind of dies down. Then you get a little bit of molasses on the tongue that that lingers. Mm-hmm. It's really, really good. A little um, spiciness. Mm-hmm. You know, I like the way the spicy comes and then just yeah, and then go, just fades, and like yeah. just fades. And what you got here, I, you know, I do notice there's some Jamaican, there's some Barbados in there, there's some Fiji in there. Uh, just you, you have all these distinct flavors just kind of coming together. You know what it is? It's the Voltron of rum, man. <laughs> <laughs> they're more powerful when they're together. I'll you know, form the head. <laughs> I was anticipating I'll this to be that leg. very sort of funky rubbery uh, thing, and there's a tiny element of that in there, That'd but it's really, Jamaican. it's really, yeah, it's really not yeah. Uh, not prevalent. Yeah, no, it, it it all it all blends together very nicely. Yeah, for sure. I have a Jamaica rum that uh, that you laid on me a while back. Mm-hmm. And it's so good. Every once in a while, when I'm like, man, I want something funky right now. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, Ian, got one. It does you, lay down uh, the funk. You you have talked about the fact that you weren't really that knowledgeable about rums when we started Not the show. At all. And and that, like, is this just like an education this or what? Is, yeah, this is amazing. It's just wonderful. Like the fact that the fact that rum can be this this varied. I just had no idea about it. Um, because uh, I just thought rum was kind of a flavor profile, and that's all it was. I didn't 
know how much different runs I have to around. agree with you. Yeah. That's that's one thing I've learned, especially with this. It, it really but does I was, have options. I was much the same way about tequila as well. And yeah, and see, that's and, been and a, didn't really, that had been a passion really of mine for it, years, yeah. especially Añejo tequilas. I was I was really, really like close close my like c- kind of the same way you are about um uh, um I've uh, learned a lot about, about whiskey. Old E, you know. Yeah, yeah. So do, do, we have, do we have time for one more? <laughs> sure. Yeah. yeah. Let's do this one. Uh, so, I'm not going to turn down when Docs wants to pour another. So this is a Jamaican one. Now, this is very interesting, uh, this one. It's coming from Long Pond. That's one of our distilleries. But we have a guy. How many distilleries do you guys own we, from, for rum? Okay, so we are and we own two in Jamaica in partnership with the Jamaican government. Uh, and we own one uh, in Barbados, the largest one uh, in Barbados, which is the West Indies Rum Distillery. Okay, yeah, that's the one I'm the most familiar with, I think, is the West Indies Rum Distillery. But uh, I'll tell you, um, you guys just have a, uh, you know, there, there are rums from other, you know, distillers that I like. But you guys just, you're the ones that seem into... You're like the great studio musicians of rum. You know, there's so much going on here. I and there's so much variety. I don't you know another rum there. company that explores as much as exactly. you guys do. That's that's a better way of saying like it. Like they'll Thank put you. out a, a few things, but you guys you guys like you just try everything and I love that. Yeah. There there's a there's a lot I I, I hate to say it, but there's just so much in the rum world there's so much uh you can't do that. You can't do that. You can't do that. You can't do that. Says who? Lighten up. Just, I'm sorry. I'm going to get so much trouble for this. We Just have fun, man. We like to have fun. And the thing is, we're 100% transparent about the fun that we're having. Yeah. Right. There's, there's nothing we're hiding. We're open about everything. And so, yeah. You know what it reminds me of? You've seen uh, the, the Queen movie. Uh, um, uh, what was Barbie? No. <laughs> wow. <laughs> no, the the band Queen. Oh, 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 yeah, that was way off. I even went the Queen of England before. When, that. <laughs> when, when when they go out to the country yeah, and they show yeah. all those bizarre recording tactics they have, yeah, yeah. that's how I feel we are. You know well, I mean? yeah, and, and and you are also a little like Barbie, but uh, yeah. but that's a whole How different. Am I like Barbie? That's it. a whole <laughs> different thing. No, uh, uh, we said we wanted funky. And you answered. This is one of the funkiest rums. So I'm glad you said I've that. Ever this, tried. So this one is from Long Pond, and you'll see the initials V R W on there. This mm-hmm. is mm-hmm. a classic uh, method in Jamaican rum lore. That a lot of times you'll see some initials, and a lot of times it is the initial of the distiller who uh, uh, produced it. V R W. I don't know what the R stands for, but it's Vivian R Wisdom. Uh, Vivian Wisdom is a tremendous man that's on our, he's on the team now. He he used to work at Hamden back in the day and now he oversees all of our Jamaican rum projects. Wow, wonderful. And this is his first initial dist- distillate. Uh, I'm sure there'll be many more to come. Mm. But it's only it's not not very old. I think it's about uh, There's a not the same Wisdom as Wisdom High School is named after though, I guess. <laughs> there's a there's a candy Since he came from Jamaica, Jamaica. I'm <laughs> saying there. There's a candy like flavor uh that comes through in the mm-hmm. retro hail on this in the best possible way um this might be my favorite so far that we've tried today so this one we kind of did some bookend aging here but we started off with bourbon barrels in jamaica back to france aged longer in the cognac barrels like all plantation or plantare uh and at the end there we put it back in kentucky bourbon cask in france uh so we kind of that bookend of of bourbon cognac bourbon barrels Uh, you know ian said this earlier but i just love how experimental you guys are how you try all these different uh, ways to uh, age and rest the rum, how you do all of these, you you tap all of these distilleries in all of these different locations. It's just, it's it's like, it's like an artist, but you've got a huge palette of colors to choose from when you're putting mm-hmm. something together. And I just, I think it's, I think it's genius. You're not letting, it, you're not letting the record you label tell you what to do. The mouth right. on this I one love is just that. amazing. <laughs> uh, yeah, if... Uh, <laughs> If the, if the uh, if the label says I don't hear a single, you go too bad. Put it out anyway, right? <laughs> this is this is so good. I can't stop drinking this one. This is fantastic. Mm, yeah, the label said it's, they did. This is not your your run of the mill rum. This has got some funky. It's got some chemically kind of things. Some little bit of rubber, and I mean all of these things in the best possible mm-hmm, way. Mm-hmm. Like it's so good. And then the mouthfeel uh, starts off a little silky, and then gets round, and then a little warm. Mm-hmm. Super interesting. It's numbing to the palate a little bit. A little bit. <laughs> to uh, paraphrase from the movie you referenced, if the label says, we don't hear a single, it's like, fine, just put out Bohemian Rhapsody. <laughs> <laughs> like, been one of the most popular songs of all time. Mm-hmm. You know? It's had like three different lifetimes mm-hmm. on the charts. The original, 
the Wayne's World, and then when the it's had a thousand uh, times in my out. shower, I can tell you that right <laughs> now. <laughs> Scott a moose, Scott a moose. All right, we got to uh, take a break. See, I sang on this show too. Uh, we got to take a break, and we will be uh, back. Uh, drinking news is still ahead. Plus, we have more to taste and more to talk about. Docs is here. It is smoking and toasting. We shall return. Welcome back. It's Smoking and Toasting, our show all about craft beer, fine spirits, and hand-rolled cigars. We love having Docs on the show, and, and it's really a, 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 two, a two-pronged a two sort of love. We love having you on because uh, you're fun. You're, you're, you're a fun kind of a guy. And we appreciate the, uh, the content and the humor that you bring to the show. And then secondly, perhaps more selfishly, more realistically, we love the rums you bring on the show and the cognacs and other things from time to time. But uh, no, you, it's, we always know we're going to drink well when you're on the show. Humor, hu- humor and rum. For once, can't y'all guys appreciate me for my body? Yes. Well, <laughs> <laughs> plus, you are also the, uh, what is it, the, the spiky photos? The spiky photos? What the, the hell's spiky, a photos? The spiky photos. Sp- the sp- spiky uh, fox. 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 Oh, sorry. Photos. Spiky photos. It's like something more from medieval torture no, right there. No, no. It's, 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 kind of, it's kind of like POTUS is the president, right? So it was. it's kind spiky of an elevated... I can't believe I said spiky spiky photos. From now on, you are... Uh, <laughs> Andrew Doxakis, the yeah. spiky photos. That's right. That's, that's you now. From now on. Oh my goodness. Uh, see, this is why we like having you on the show. It's not just the rum, but it is the uh, rum. Excuse you, gentlemen. What are we yeah. talking about? Uh, we're talking about the fact that Dox is going to pour us another rum, and we're going to uh, sample I am it and, pour you and another enjoy. Rum. Uh, <laughs> so tell us about what you're pouring this time. What's better than a guay? A Paraguay. A Paraguay. Uh, Thank you. I like it. I like it. I like it. That's uh, so. Yeah. That's somewhere, my dad is smiling right now. <laughs> that was such a dad joke. That was such a dad really joke. Oh, and he loves the worst of them too. Oh my yeah. Dad. The well, worst. That was of definitely them. one of the worst yeah, of them. He, he's, he is a, a, a lovely man, but he he loves him some really awful. So humor. this is a Paraguay 2019, <laughs> and Paraguay is a relatively new uh, territory say, for us. I, so. I have not heard of. Uh, rums from Paraguay. Uh, uh, this is actually the first one I've tried in the bottle. I've tried some out of the. Sorry about mm-hmm. that. Uh, the barrel before. Um, it's tough being you. I know. Sorry Damn, about that. Yeah, it's the worst. Uh, things that. Uh, yeah. Wow, that's quite a pour. Yeah. Uh, Terry, Ooh. Terry, make sure to finish the show yeah. before yeah. you finish that rum. <laughs> if, if you all see the rainbow colors, yeah. my bad. <laughs> Why are there so many? Uh, so, um, so, sorry, I don't know where that came from. Uh, so, what are we? What are we drinking here, Docs? This is a rum from Paraguay. Paraguay, yes. Uh, now, this one has been triple aged, and I'm going to might just say this wrong. Uh, it's in a. Kiro, Cairo? I, don't, I honestly don't know. I apologize to good folks at Cairo, Rye. Uh, it's actually a Finnish Rye, uh, as in Finland. As in Finland. As in Finland, yeah. yeah. This and has it, a... it, it's going to be obviously the first time that we played around with some uh, European whiskeys. We've been doing work forever with uh, 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 Mac Myra, the uh, Swedish. This has people. almost a buttery uh, butteriness this. on yeah. the nose. This Buttery's is right. really good. Buttery's right. You nailed yeah. it. I love this. This is just like, as smooth yeah. and right off, right as off the bat. I haven't even tried it yet, and I'm, I'm just and guys, enjoying how it smells. About, there's something about the nose on this that reminds me of the kitchens at Bon Bonnet. That's our uh, that's our chateau in France, and just something about the kitchen. It just it, it just reminds me of that. Oh, this is so good. This is so, uh, like, the sweetness is like a, a like, like powdered sugar it's just kind so of. It's balanced. so. Um, Y'all want to do the show? And then Bombay, you want to go to the house? Yes. Let's go, let's go in October. Let's do it. Let's go in October. I'd right. love to. Let's do it. I'm in. Cool. Done. Will you right. uh, yeah. line up some people for us to chat with uh, while we're there? I'll be there. Well, I know. What, what do you need? We can about, talk to you here. We're talking about real Houston, people. So. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, there's no. plenty of people I can line you up to talk to. They're not going to understand you. No. <laughs> but see, you'll be there to translate. No, yeah. no, yeah, actually, no. Uh, seriously, uh, we, there's plenty of people there. We, uh, well, our, our, um, our historian and our, and our tour guide, Jacques Blanc, is such a character. I love him. He, I think he's like 95 years old, but he looks like he's only 50. Uh, he's been married 12 times, and he once worked at the Playboy Man, not the Playboy Mansion, the Playboy Club in Chicago back in the 70s. Is that so? Where dude's about got some 11, of his, to tell. Uh, 11 of his uh, <laughs> divorces came from? <laughs> he, he, he would roll his eyes so hard if he heard me say that. But the, but the real compliment is, is that he uses my jokes now when we're taking the tour. Oh. Like we'll be driving along, and I'll, I'll like. We'll see like a cornfield, and I go, and over here you'll see the vineyards of our competitors. So. You got, you got, <laughs> you got to love 
the fact that he's lived this life, he's been married all these times, he's, you know... 12, uh, 12 times was an exaggeration. Been, but at just... the, been at the Playboy <laughs> Club, like, and now he conducts the tour. He's the for boy, Maison Ferrand. And, and, I love that. And he's got the, the most soothing voice in the world because it's brutal. Because like I, like he'll be talking and, and giving us a tour, and I've you know my sleep's not right. Yeah. And I'm like, because it's like an air. It's like, it's like <laughs> what they call the ASMR video, like a yeah. live thing. <laughs> you are you are like the poster child for sleep apnea when he's uh, when he's hosting the tour. Well, I, I, may I may I one day land as softly as he has. I love that. It's that's, just that's pretty glorious. amazing. Well said, And this, sir. by the way. Is so good. It may be my favorite of anything you've poured. Ah, today. This is this one versus it's the last one is tough. Wonderful. This is so good. And it's so different from the last one, though. And that's again what I love about the way you guys experiment. Well, put a, put a pin in that. We're going to do some compare and contrast in the next one. And we'll be right back for that. Plus, drinking news is next. It is smoking and toasting. And Docs is going to do the gator thing. Welcome back to Smoking and Toasting. It's the show where we definitively answer the question, what do you do with a drunken sailor? And we are back with uh, our uh, our drink new segment of the show, so we'll get to that in just moments. But first, I, I just have to comment again on how amazingly good that last rum was that you poured. Was it, this was Paraguay? Paraguay. Wow. Uh, I don't know where it's going. It might be in Tennessee. I think it's good. Uh, maybe you could steer it towards... You could like... Well, next time, next time you're the, next, just time, next time the voice of Specs is over there, just drop in the big office and tell them you want that one. Yeah, we want that one. Yeah, we, we definitely do. All right. Well, it's uh, time to bring the segment uh, to the fore here on Smoking and Toasting that uh, people seem to continue to ask for. We have no idea why. It's become the most popular segment on the show. And uh, all that tells us is that you people have absolutely no idea what you're doing. Uh, Drinking <laughs> News is a segment where we bring you a story that is often, but not always, about drinking. But it is always best enjoyed if you've been drinking. And today we bring you a drink of news story with uh, not only Ian on ukulele, but I believe Docs is going to accompany him on the theme song. <laughs> no. No? Okay. Well, uh, at, least, at least when I point at you, you have to say, I had to take my gator to the vet. You okay, can do wait, that, don't, right? You just ruined it for everybody. It was going to be a surprise. Oh, and no. Just, it wouldn't just... be a surprise to anyone. They're expecting it when they see you sitting there. Okay. It's time, ladies and gentlemen. It's your show, Cruz, whatever. For drinking news. <laughs> <laughs> drinking news, drinking news. Now it's time for drinking news. Drinking news, drinking news. Now it's time for drinking news. A Florida man with one arm said he had a gator for a pet. When asked about his absent arm, he said, uh, I wonder who's going to say it. I had to take my gator to the vet. Drinking news, drinking news. Now's our time for drinking news. Oh, yeah. Cheers, y'all. Welcome to Drinking News, our, uh, our little segment on the program where we bring you a story that has been reported in the news somewhere and is not from a parody site. It's actual news from somewhere. I'm reminded this week of an old song by a soft rock dude from the 70s. Now, that is what they called it back then, soft rock. Like, dude, I really want to rock out, but not so much. Are you At ready work? to soft rock? As in, your amplifier goes to 11, mine goes to 3. <laughs> and listen, even a hard rock band like Kiss had one of their biggest hits with a piano ballad called Beth. As the old late night commercial for you know, the... I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to uh, go ahead and raise some ire with our um, listeners. I don't think that's a very good song. Whoa! Oh. Yeah! Whoa! Whoa! Oh, he whoa, went there. Whoa! Yeah. Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> I feel like the guys in that State Farm commercial where he does they do bundling and it's more words and they're like, whoa. Whoa. Uh, yeah. I like the way you wait until they completely retire and are no longer going to be yeah. just anything yeah. but avatars, yeah. and then you say Gene that. Simmons would come over here and kick your ass, buddy. <laughs> But as the old late night commercial for the Monster Ballads CD collection used to say, Monster oh, yes. Ballads. Every bad boy has a soft side. <laughs> I'm not kidding. It actually I said that. that. I can believe yeah. that. Yeah. But 
that's not important right now. Uh, there was a soft rocker back in the 70s named Jim Croce, who released oh, yeah. five studio albums and 12 singles, two of which went to number one on the charts. I love John Belushi's version of him. Jim Croce told us, if you'll allow me to quote a couple of lines, Jim Croce told us, you don't tug on Superman's cape. <laughs> you don't spit into the wind. And you don't pull the mask off the old Lone Ranger. No, sir. Now, those exhortations may seem a little bit quaint in today's world, but the meaning still stands. Have some idea what you're going to be dealing with before you wind up antagonizing the wrong person. Which is exactly what happened in today's story of a Florida man. Florida man. Who was doing exactly what Florida man tends to do. He was in the middle of a parking lot at around 4 a.m., screaming on the phone to an unidentified woman when the hero of our story, Javier Baez, pulled into a parking spot on the same lot. Now, according to Javier, the Florida man, Florida man, 50-year-old Omar Marrero, bounced around the parking lot yelling into his phone and then proceeded to bang on Javier Baez's car window with a knife. According to Javier, after Marrero pounded on the glass with his knife, he then yanked Javier's door open. And again, according to Javier, I told him to leave me alone. I'm calling the cops. I hope he doesn't break my window. That's all I cared about. All right, hold on. If some guy's pounding on your window, mm -hmm. wouldn't you lock your door? You would think. But right. maybe not in this case. Or just drive off because you're in a car. <laughs> There's also that. But the crazed Florida man, of course, <laughs> did not stop there, according to Javier. Instead, he, Wait, he could not save time in a bottle. Yeah. <laughs> Instead, he came at our hero with a knife. Oh, yeah. Attempting to stab him and threatening bodily harm. Bodily harm. <laughs> oh, 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 Doc's getting in there. Good sting. <laughs> at which point, our hero, Javier, was not Superman or the Lone Ranger or Jack Reacher or even Donatello from the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. He was still the wrong guy to mess with. But that doesn't mean that Javier Baez was exactly helpless. Our deranged Florida man just happened to attack a former MMA fighter. Oh, good <laughs> idea. When you train so many times, Javier told CBS News Miami. <laughs> he told, oh, I can already like where this is going. He told CBS News Miami. <laughs> it becomes just a reflex. Once it comes to that, it's all instincts. I couldn't do much but just react. I've been training my whole life. Black belt, jujitsu, wrestled in college. I've got eight pro fights, MMA masters. I've got great training partners. Oops. All I can hear is Mike Tyson going, I just came at me and then I just punched him. <laughs> Even better, by the way, there is a video on YouTube from a nearby surveillance camera that shows Javier dodging the knife, kicking the Florida man's completely unprepared ass, and body slamming him to the ground. Search MMA fighter stops knife attacker to check it out for yourself. It's pretty awesome. Real Google. Omar Marrero, in addition to having the living duty beaten out of him, has now been charged with burglary with assault and aggravated battery and remanded to a nice, warm jail cell. Dude, that's <laughs> after you're getting your butt kicked. <laughs> the story, of course, reminds Dang. us of just how important it is to pick your battles wisely. <laughs> it reminds us of the danger of not knowing what you're up against. And it reminds us that, as we should already know, there's something seriously wrong with Florida. <laughs> it does, however, cause me to once again wax poetic. And I've pinned a little sonnet, sonnet. Some, some prose, if you will, uh, that I've been inspired to share with you as something of a cautionary tale. Should you ever find yourself in a similar situation, or should you ever find yourself in Florida? Uh, anyway, it goes... A little something like this. A Florida man with a knife 
made the biggest mistake of his life. The man he unleashed an attack upon was a formidable brute from the octagon. Now Omar's some guy named Bubba's new wife. <laughs> Reporting live from Miami-Dade County, where inmates tell me that uh, Bubba's giving our Florida man a whole new meaning to the phrase body slamming. <laughs> My name is Cruz, and that is your... Drinking news, drinking news. That's our time for drinking news. Cheers, y'all. Were you giving me the end no, of the no, segment? No, 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 I'm trying to get Docs to sing more. Oh, okay. I want Docs to sing more. <laughs> See, no, like this guy, he's this this guy, he's bringing something to the table. Yeah. I am picking up what you're throwing down. Uh, you digging from whence he's rapping? <laughs> he's smelling what <laughs> you're stepping in. Yeah. All right, uh, Ian, uh, during drinking news and and all of the uh, uh, ukulele is... playing and the madness, somehow managed to pour our uh, next beer. So, Ian, tell us uh, what you can tell us about what we're drinking. Um, here. well. It's big. It's from Incendiary Brewing Company. They are uh, um, barrel aged imperial bourbon stout called Untethered Angel. Wow, tether that angel that back is up, big. guys! It's only coming in at fifteen percent. <laughs> Holy moly! Wow. A barrel aged stout aged twenty four months in something maple. This is a little <laughs> rubbed off. Something maple bourbon yeah, barrels. Yeah. You can taste the maple. Sure. Get a close up ABV. on Doc's face there. Now, Doc's, I take it this is not your yeah, cup close of up on It's not your cup of beer. <laughs> tether, tether her back up to get that angel <laughs> back on the road. Man. So no. Ian, Ian will will happily take your. Uh, so I, I will tell you, this is not the most amazing barrel aged stuff we've had. It's pretty good though. It's nice. Um, uh, there's nothing off about it. <laughs> It's just, it's big. It's See, a little one-dimensional. This is how spoiled I'm going to say that you are when you drink this and go, yeah, it's not the best one we've had, but it's it's good. This is a little one-dimensional um, and a little boozy, which I kind of like. It is a little boozy. That's for it's sure. It's a little boozy, uh, which I kind of like. Um, this is it's super sticky, mm -hmm. like super sweet, um, which is a little bit off-putting, that part of it. Um, so, but it's pretty nice. Interestingly... It's, I think I'm the Drinkable. only person on the show today who liked all three beers. <laughs> Each of you guys bailed on one. Yeah, that, that one's so heavy, it should say, drink from the knees. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's pretty good. Wow. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I like it. I, I think it's... Uh, Winston-Salem, North Carolina. This is It's it's um, it's a big style, though. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, this is almost so heavy. This is almost like barley wine territory. If it had a little more yeah. fruit. Yeah, kind of notes to it. It would definitely be almost in that territory. I, I, here's the thing there with the stouts and and, uh, and this nice. Is, I'm, I'm sure this. <laughs> look, at, look at how it sticks to the cup, though, yeah. man. And that's not a glass. That's a cup. That's just a plastic cup. A I, plastic I, cup. But just... I don't mean to say that they're not making a quality product there. It's just not my particular. Uh, I get it. Yeah, I get it. But just for me, a stout, it just it, it can't be that heavy. And with that, it's it's the coffee residue thing. It's yeah. Just for something that heavy, I like what you're more talking about that barley wine. If it's gonna be that heavy and that, it's gotta have more. Fruitier aspect. More of the date. This more that that that, that that deep, yeah. deep, dark, super dark, evil chocolate and co and, and cocoa and, and coffee. It's just too much for me. Speaking of super it's dark. That's a lot. This is this is definitely you got you had two rums there, and one yeah. of them is much lighter and one of them is much darker. Uh -huh. Which one do you want to try next? Uh let's start with the uh, 2019. That's the younger of the two. Okay, 2019, and this is from the Fiji Islands. I'm sorry, my uh my, my my incendiary is coming back at me there. So <laughs> I'm I am I am a big fan of your Isle of Fiji uh, rum. Oh yeah, yeah. Isle of Fiji just, rum. It's a wonderful, wonderful. Is a go to a staple on my shelf. At How did all you times. like that? By the way, I got you a bottle of that for Christmas. Oh yes, that's fabulous. Uh, yes, that's that awesome. is yes. Well, we're actually going to try two single casts from that same distillery, um, and they're very very different. This one is um, a 2019, and the tertiary aging on it. Is going to be coffee liqueur. Oh, very interesting. A coffee liqueur uh, a coffee barrel. Coffee liqueur barrel. But it's not what you think. This it's is, not going to produce a coffee is, flavored uh, not beverage. Not at all. Not at interesting. all. Interesting. Okay. That's what I was thinking. In fact, I, I was very leery of this one uh, and I was pleasantly surprised. Now, it's not the sweetest rum out there. It, it's a little bit on the, uh, um, I don't want to say bitter side, but super, super dry. Oh, the nose has a very mineral kind of quality to mm -hmm. like it. it doesn't, and, and it's there's mineral in the like, finish. The other too. ones were all a little more molasses or uh, mm -hmm. like forward kind of thing. This is yeah. a little more mineral on the nose. Right and you'll the pick bat. it. You'll pick it up on the finish too. Yeah, 
There's also, is there a fruitiness in there that I'm smelling? There's kind of a... Well, you're always going to have that tropical aspect, uh, that lushness that you get from all the Fiji rooms, so sure. But you see, I mean, that, that thing is just that, that that's English wet dry right there. I love... It's 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 almost a leathery flavor. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. it's really, really good. I, I love your artwork wow. on the Isle of Fiji oh, bottle. Yeah. It just transports you right into that tropical... Uh, well, I tell people, yeah. and it sounds stupid, but it tastes like the bottle looks. Yeah, it's it, does. It, it, does. it really does. Tropical, yeah. you know? It really does. Man, I turned my brother on to that. He couldn't believe it. He was like, well, how much is a bottle of that? I was like, $25-ish. Ish. He was like, really? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's so funny though, because like uh, I got people that absolutely love the five year from Barbados up and down, and they love the 20th anniversary from Barbados, and they try to Fiji and they go, mm, not so much. But I respect that, man. Our, well, everybody has our, their own sweet spot. Exactly. Spots, right? yeah. our, our favorite profiles are going to branch out so far. We try not to do the same room twice. That doesn't surprise me. Yeah. yeah, the only problem with that, and it's a good problem to have, but the only problem with that is when you do one that just knocks me out. So this, I can't keep buying This it. last one has go. a little bit of an acidic quality to yeah. it that uh, that none of the others have. Definitely a little more of the um, a little more of the um, agreed uh, uh, mineral water. A little more of the acidic kind of uh, aftertaste you know, to it. You nice made a, though. Made a, a critical error. You gave. Terry the bottle of his own. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Critical error. But we got we got to keep the producer happy so they don't. So have this rest. one is actually a lot older. It's a 2004, uh, and it's been aged an extra year in Umush, 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 I'm going to say this that's wrong easy again. for you to say. <laughs> Plum liqueur casks. If you mm. notice in these ones that Doc's in, I'm always like, "Hey, don't forget my my wife." Mm-hmm. <laughs> he's when he's when he's here, I'm like, "Yes, I want okay. to try that." We're going to talk more about this in the last yeah. segment, but this is also wonderful. Not not that you've had anything that hasn't been, but th- what's awesome about them is they're all wonderful in their own way. These are all very distinctly different from each other. We'll talk None a little bit more about that. Are my favorites. When we get back, it's smoking and toast. Just want to say I really love uh, this this rum, but you got to tell you got to say the name, the new name of the rum again for me, so I so I don't get this wrong. Plantare, plantare. Yeah. I love it. I love it. You have brought so many. Every one of these was really good, and every one was very distinctly different from yes. the others, and that's what I love about. It. And yet it's all rum. It's all uh, in that just wonderful, uh. sweet sort of rum uh, taste. But when I say sweet, it's funny because. The the pine the Buchanan's pineapple that we had had a sweetness to it, and it was not pleasant. No, no, not at all. <laughs> this has a sweetness that's just natural, and seems to just just absolutely complement the spirit in question. And I love all of these, and I want you to make all of them available here so we can buy them. But I know you, I know you can't do that. So none of uh, these are available right now. As no, of right now, no, right? I, you know, I, they're, they're, I'm, they're, they're, they've been sent out for assignment. We don't know yet. Uh, number we, we, we don't three know what, the, and number four. I put the uh, placing really. hat on them, but we don't know if it's going to be... Uh, was, oh, my God. Was number this, four the really smooth one? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That was that was probably my favorite. The, par- but the Paraguay. The Paraguay, Paraguay yeah. yeah. Uh, but this and, one... this Tell me again where this last one is from. It's a Paraguay. Paraguay. It's Paraguay. 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 Oh my God. Caramel. Caram- Caram- I, yeah. <laughs> Caramel. Caramel. Told me this two segments Texas ago. Texas Caramel. Yeah, you say potato. I say potato. You're wrong. I'm starting to say Lionel. <laughs> Lionel. Uh, no, what is this last one, though? This is uh, um, from where? Uh, it's also this from Fiji. 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 Same, same, this is really good. Same, same rum coa Fiji. Well, this same, is the older story. Fiji one. It's kind of like much older. This yeah. reminds me a little of your Isle of Fiji rum, but it's got just a little more uh, uh, of the darker flavors. Well, to it's it. got a some more nice rancio on the end there, guys. It's four, like almost like a fortifying wine, but that's going to be that extra plum liqueur mm. yeah, finishing. It, mm. de- it definitely brings some uh, 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 thickness uh, to that, it. The, yeah. the dark fruit kind of thing yeah. is there. Yeah. All right. So let's say I have not had. You guys rum. And I show up in the store and I'm looking at what they've got available. What's the best starting place? Oh boy. Isle of Fiji. Uh, you you know, know, Isle of Fiji, I have to say, because you gave that to me for Christmas, I have mm-hmm. to say that's not a bad place to start. I'll say this. For the experienced rum drinker, 
Uh, I, I would probably start with, the, or believe it or not, our, our Zamaica, our plantation, uh, oh, our Punta yeah. Okay. Punta Rea, Zamaica, cr- which is a, a bl- blend of five pot stills uh, from our Jamaican distilleries. Um, I think if you're looking for something a little bit more, okay, I went with my cigar after dinner all day long, the EXO 20th anniversary. Oh. Yeah. But once you, and again, if, you, if you're just looking for like that mixer rum, you can't go wrong with our three-star rum. I always say that it's uncharacteristically charactered for a white rum. Mm-hmm. Uh, and at the end of the day, guys, people ask me all the time, what's your favorite uh, plantation? And, you know, I tell them, it's like asking me what my favorite out-of-town girlfriend is. I love them for all different reasons. <laughs> <laughs> did, I, did I say it last time? I'm, my wife hates that joke. Uh, yeah, she she hates does. it so much. But, but, but seriously, guys, I, <laughs> no matter where I start off, I always end up the evening with the Stiggins Fancy Pineapple Rum. Well, so it's interesting, always. while we have just a moment, that that rum became a staple at our house uh, before I even met you. My wife was out, you know, doing like a girl's happy hour thing I at a bar. I owe her a whole case. I haven't brought her a yeah. bottle in a while, yeah. man. <laughs> uh, she was out doing that, and the bartender recommended it because she said, she told him she liked rum, and he's like, "Oh, you have to taste this." And he poured her a little bit of it. And she liked it. And she ordered another one, and she came home and said, "We have to, we have to buy this." And we we started buying it, and and we've basically had a bottle of it in our house ever since. Uh, and it's just it's just one of those so. One of which one, one of my, which one was it? One of my go-tos. The Stiggins Fancy Pineapple. The Stiggins Fancy Pineapple. We okay. also See, now have a bottle of Isle of Fiji on One the of my yeah. go-tos yeah. is the Isle of Fiji, which you so generously sent to uh, Cruz so we could try it, and then he drank it all. And so, <laughs> and so I, got, I got to try it. Years. Yeah, 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 yeah. He, he just can't, he can't let it go. You brought him, you know, rum. I bought I him a bottle of rum. Months later, and I, now it's a staple on my shelf because it's amazingly good. It really is. It really is. But yeah, he won't let it go. But that God. one, no, that one and the XO are on my shelf. It, like, I love both of those. Well, I'm, I'm yet again going to attempt to make it up for you and leave these samples here today and let, watch y'all guys fight over them. Okay, about that. Very, very good. I want that one right there. <laughs> Thanks, Doug. Um, so uh, I hope everybody here has a, uh, a wonderful week. And Docs, thank you again for being on the show. It's always a pleasure. Thank you for having we me. We always enjoy it. And uh, certainly the rums were, were wonderful, but it's uh, always good to see you as well. So thanks for having me, guys. Thanks so much. It. You're always welcome. Uh, Ian, anything you want to tease about what's coming up on the show? Mm, next week is going to be me and you. Okay. But I promise we'll have interesting things to talk about. The week about. after that, you have to figure out. And then after that, it's my fault. All right. Me. Well, fair enough. Uh, we will be talking about the highest rated IPA in every state. That's something we'll talk about next week. We'll do a little IPA expose. So we'll look forward to that. Or I will, at least, because I love IPAs. Have a great week, everybody. Thanks to uh, everybody involved in making the show happen. And thanks to you for listening and watching. Uh, and until we meet again, my friends. Cheers, y'all. Cheers, y'all. Cheers, y'all. Yeah, you never listen to what anybody else says. Such a stubborn one of